Hello, I'm Sai Kondapalli and I'm one of the product manager for Azure Database for MySQL. And in today's session, I'm going to share information on how to make your Azure Database for MySQL servers performing efficiently. So let's get started. Uh, just a preface before I deep dive into the tips and the checklist here. Uh, so when we think about database performance, it is a very hot topic amongst database users and practitioners, right? So users are always looking for the best performance, preferably out of the box uh, with no additional tuning. While uh, Azure Database for MySQL is already tuned uh, for the best performance out of the box, workloads can vary application to application. And there could be a lot of usage patterns that can differ how an application can perform, right? For example, it could be seasonal peak, uh, for an e-commerce application and daily peaks at certain hours for you know fintech applications uh, so as a result uh, specific workloads require some sort of you know user intervention uh, to get a, a better boost and get the best out of a mysql uh, database server performance so first and foremost uh, database performance is limited by physics right if you think about it in case of a server performance the three main hardware resources that potentially could become a bottleneck are cpu utilization uh, memory usage as well as io of utilization right so uh, to understand if it is cpu utilization you need to look at monitoring which we'll cover in the next part but uh, if you're observing consistent cpu peaks consider vertically scaling your database size to provide more processing power for your workload use Similarly, if there is high uh, memory utilization, uh, consider to also scale your database and at the same time also look for queries uh, that may be utilizing a lot of memory buffers that could be leading to higher memory utilization. And finally, if you're observing any IO bottlenecks, uh, consider provisioning more IOPS for your database so that to switch to auto scale IOPS, which allow you to enjoy uh, worry-free man uh, IO management in Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server. And the second tip uh, is to have concrete monitoring in place uh, for your Azure database for MySQL flexible server, uh, which means that you know um, having any monitoring data for your database server helps you make better decisions to understand, troubleshoot, and optimize your workloads, right? So monitoring the right metrics um, help you to keep performance, reliability, and um, uh, availability of your server and applications. Furthermore, uh, it is also beneficial if you already have some sort of, you know, baseline numbers for your metrics that are already set in stone so that you can fully understand if there are any peaks as well as if there are any depths uh, when, uh, you know, your uh, metrics are, you know, uh, showing some sort of, you know, utilization and saturation on the database server itself. And in addition to that, Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server is also integrated with Azure Monitor Workbooks. Um, so with workbooks, you get this flexible canvassing for analyzing data and creating rich visual reports uh, within the Azure portal itself. So you can comb and canvas multiple Azure resources uh, and their details through the workbooks so that you can monitor multiple uh, resources at once and uh, paint a picture as to where uh, saturation for your application is happening. And furthermore, you can also integrate uh, third-party database observability tools such as Datadog, Percona Monitoring Management, and Grafana, where you can monitor multiple environments together and get a detailed analysis on how your environments are performing. And uh, moving further, uh, understanding your workload characteristics is quite important. So you can supplement the infrastructure in the right manner to support efficient processing of transactions for your application, right? For example, such as thread pools or proxy solutions to support higher number of connections coming in from your application to the database server, where you can extract more throughput and also you can commit the number of uh, vCores for your database server in an efficient way so that you can maximize the performance uh, by leveraging proxy solution or a thread pool uh, in a database environment. And similarly, uh, for applications whose workload is uh, mainly read dominant, uh, scale your servers horizontally, first and foremost, uh, by adding more read replicas. So leveraging this approach uh, not only segregates the workload between writes and reads amongst multiple servers, but it will also ease the burden off of your primary server, which is primarily responsible for processing uh, write transactions in an efficient manner. And to manage connectivity for multiple uh, database servers where you have read replicas and the primary database server, what you can do is consider leveraging a proxy solution such as Proxy SQL uh, that can manage um, and load balance the read write split uh, intrinsically amongst all of these database nodes. 
And uh, for applications that are super sensitive to latencies of any magnitude and order, consider adding a dedicated caching layer, uh, such as Azure Redis cache, uh, cache, et cetera, to your existing database environment to boost the uh, performance for your writes and reads. And besides doing all the above, um, such as you know increasing compute, uh, adding read replicas, uh, providing greater AOPS for your database environment, sometimes the latencies for queries may not resolve by themselves in which case it can come down to latencies of individual queries or a set of queries that are uh, not optimally written in nature. So um, to better understand query latencies, do check um, uh, if a single query is degraded in nature or a subset of queries are running slow. So for catching poorly performing queries, uh, what you can do is you can enable slow query logging mechanism in Azure Database for MySQL to trace any queries that are running longer than their intended baseline duration. Once you have trail of all these queries, then you can understand their execution plan and perhaps add an index to speed up the query or if there are any redundant indexes uh, that are not used at all, you can remove them so that you can speed up your DML transactions uh, primarily. And sometimes you have to also check the cardinality uh, uh, to fully understand if things are out of order, then potentially you have to perform uh, operations such as analyze and optimize operations on the database tables themselves. And finally, tuning your server parameters uh, to better serve your database workflow needs because uh, uh, at times uh, tuning a single server parameter can boost your performance significantly, such as uh, for certain read transactions, uh, you know, uh, probably increasing the buffer pool size can, you know, provide more benefit where uh, a large amount of the uh, database tables or the result set, working result set can sit in the memory rather than every time fetching that from the storage itself. And similarly, other uh, operations such as, you know, InnoDB, IO capacity, et cetera, to provide that greater bandwidth between the compute node as well as the storage layer so that, you know, uh, the processing can be uh, enhanced further to provide that additional bandwidth to process your transactions. Uh, next, I will de demo some of these tips that we have discussed today. So here I'm in my Azure database for MySQL Flexible Server landing page. Now I'm going to monitoring and metric section. And I'm actually narrowing down the duration to the last one hour. And I'm currently looking at the uh, CPU percentage here to fully understand if there were any peaks uh, with my database server. So I see that there are multiple peaks where my database has touched 100%, right? Now I'm going to also look at the memory percentage to see if that correlates with the CPU behavior. And if there is any saturation with the uh, storage IO percentage as well. And you, as you can see, it has hit 100% uh, multiple times, which means it is workload induced uh, saturation on this particular database server. So now let us look at queries and if queries were indeed the main cause for this saturation on the database server. And now I'm looking at the DML transactions, um, such as you know the insert statements, to see uh, how those were processing in the last one hour and similarly the updates as well. And uh, moving on, I'm also uh, uh, checking if the uh, alerts have been triggered on the database server. I have set an alert over here where if the uh, CP has crossed a threshold of 50%, then I should get immediately notified on, um, on the database server itself. And moving on, uh, we have workbooks here and the first is the one of the templates that we have where you can see a lot of uh, the details about the database over our capture like the database the databases details and certain metrics inside the database itself you can also edit the database uh, workbook over here so that you know you can add additional canvassing details as well similarly uh, going into query performance insight uh, this is mainly helpful if you have any slow queries that are logged on the database server uh, apparently, all of my workload are short bursty transactions, which is why I'm not seeing anything. And uh, in enhanced metrics, you can monitor relational details such as uh, the buffer pool details, the NODB reads, the number of DML and DDL transactions happening against the database. And you can uh, also check the uh, narrow down the time range so that you know you get uh, detailed and granular information as to how the workload is behaving on the database server itself. And moving on, I'll also show you the uh, ability to add uh, read replicas to horizontally scale your database server. So you simply go to the replication player and click uh, 
add a read replica and as you can see it will give you all of the uh, necessary fields to uh, fill in so that you know you can add a read replica in the same region in a different availability zone as well and um, i'm also going into server logs to show that you know i have already enabled slow query log uh, that would capture any transactions that have crossed the threshold of uh, seconds duration would be captured in my slow query log over here and that i can download and analyze manually and um, finally, uh, I'm in the server parameters where uh, I'm checking the parameters such as, you know, the slow query log, the long query time duration uh, for it to work efficiently. And uh, similarly, InnoDB uh, parameters as well, such as InnoDB buffer pool size, et cetera, to uh, see if I need to tune them for my uh, workload uh, that I have observed on this particular database server. And similarly, I have also, uh, turn log queries not using indexes parameter uh, such that I can trace any queries that are not um, uh, using indexes would be logged uh, in my uh, query log as well. For more uh, details about Azure Database for MySQL, tune into https aka.ms MySQL resources. And for any recent product updates and announcements, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter as well as LinkedIn.